Hi, on this video I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of the new ENS interface. We are going over system and maintenance. So let's begin. If you do not have the menu pop up, simply click on the top on the triangle and then go to system. In system, the first general option you will be able to change from language all the way to output standards. This includes HDMI resolution, BGA resolution, date and time and other features. Now let's go to user on the left hand side. On the user, here's where you can change the password for the user administrator or create more users. Simply click add, type in the password of the current system and then follow the instructions. Now let's go over network. Under network, here's where you could change your IP address settings along with your internal NIC IP address if you have an MBR system. Also on the top, you can change your DDNS settings. Right next to it you have the PPPoE. This is if you do not have a router and you still have the old DSL line, you just put your username and the password. You have your NTP for the time and your NAT settings. Now let's go over advanced. Under advanced, you will be able to change your SNMP settings. Next to it, you have your email server settings. Right next to it, you have your platform access. This is considered peer-to-peer -peer or P2P using the app and scan the code. Then you got more settings. Under more settings, these are the ports that the NVR uses for you to connect remotely. Now let's go over live view. Under live view in general, you can change the output mode that you will have on the live screen. For example, live view mode is 1 plus 7. That means one camera is big and seven cameras around it. You could have 1 to 1, 1 plus 1, 1 plus 5, or 3 by 3. You could also set up your dual time, the event output, and the full screen monitoring when there's an emotion for 10 seconds or you could change the seconds to your desirable time. Now let's go to view. Under view, you can modify the views according to your liking. You can drag and drop the cameras to the specific boxes and create the order that you want. For example, if you want two by two, one plus five, one plus seven, or three by three. Now let's go to channel zero. You can enable channel zero if you want to stream all the cameras in one stream. Now let's go to holiday. In here, you can set up your holiday days so that way when you set up schedule, the schedule will read from these holidays. Now let's go to POS. Under POS, this is where you set up your point of sale. In here, you have up to four POS that you can set up. At the top, you can add, but before you add, you select your camera and then you click add. Or you can edit the POS system. In here, you can select where the POS is gonna show. You could also set up an alarming schedule and the event linkage to the alarm. Now, let's go to the top menu and go to maintenance. Under maintenance, this will give you the information about your system, such as the model number, serial number, firmware version, and so on. Now let's go to camera. Under camera, the system will give you the status of all connected IP cameras. Under record, it will give you the bitrate, the resolution, and the incurring parameter status. Now let's go to the alarm. This will also give you status of alarms if you have installed them. On this system, I do not have any alarms, so there is no status of any alarms set up. Under network, it tells you the network status of the system. Under hard drive, it tells you the hard drive status, such as the total capacity and the free space. Now let's go to log information. Under log information, you can search for logs about these related features. When you click search, it will give you a result of everything that has going on with the system. Now let's go to import and export. If you have more than one NBR that you want to have the same settings, you can import or export the settings of this NBR to another NBR system. Simply plug the USB and select export and it will 
export everything to an external USB and on the other system you will select import and it will import that specific configuration from the USB now let's go to upgrade on the upgrade if you have a USB connected it will show you the files that you can select to upgrade the system or you can upgrade the system remotely via an FTP server now let's go to default under default you have the option to restore your unit with three different options for example restore defaults factory defaults or restore to inactive let's go over network detection under network detection here you have the statistics of how much bandwidth you are using on the system as you see it's a live graph of how much bandwidth you are using and on the bottom you have the information of what's using the bandwidth now let's go to network detection network detection will allow you to ping a different ip address just to see if it's alive also you can export those things that you made into a file now let's go to network status network status will tell you how much bandwidth you're using per IP camera. It also tells you the Mbps that you are using and the Mbps that you have left on the system. Now let's go to HDD operational. Under HDD operation, the smart functions will allow you to know if your hard drive is healthy. You could also do a self-test of the hard drive, but it will take a while. So in this example, I will not do the test. Now let's go to bat sector selection. This, you can also do a self-test and you could see the bat sectors in your hard drive. If you have too many bat sectors, I would recommend you to replace the hard drive. Under health detection, the system detects the hard drive and what type of hard drive is installed. For example, it detected it was a Skyhawk Seagate hard drive. Now let's go to system service. Under system service, here's where you can enable the RTSP to the system or disable it. Along with the HTTP and the ISAPI. Now let's go to Ambif. Under Ambif, you can add the username. So this username will be able to connect to all the Ambif cameras. If you have a lot of Ambif cameras that use the same username and password, you can create the username by adding it and then put the username and the password and now this MBR system, when you connect the camera, it will be basically like plug and play. And this concludes the video of system and maintenance. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to click the like, share and subscribe for more upcoming videos.